What's up? Thanks for coming back. Hey, I know that the little image on the YouTube video is a little bit of clickbait. I'm showing this, you know, cool looking flared port, but I'm not actually going to use it in this set of speakers. But I do need to tune the port because right now this box is tuned too low for either woofer that I decide to use. So this is the Dayton uh, Designer Series woofer which I think is what I'm gonna end up using eventually. This is the Dayton Classic woofer. Uh, both of them have very similar uh, FBs or the frequency of the box that it calls for for a vented enclosure. And that puts this enclosure at about a 25 Hertz tune, which I believe uh, the Dayton Classic uh, I believe has a FB of say 34 to 35 Hertz. That's where it would be ideal at. And the designer series, according to Parts Express, it's actually like 39 Hertz. Um, I do have, uh, I believe it's a speaker, speaker box light or something like that. Um, I ran it through there. Uh, it's actually got this driver, both drivers in their database, and basically it's on the parameters for this driver that they have in their database, it calls for a 1.9 cubic foot box and a tuning frequency of 33 and a half. Um, with this diameter port, which is two and three eighths ID, Essentially, it's just got to be four inches long instead of the almost eight inches long that it is now. So it's a super easy fix. I'm going to try to breeze through this, measure it, and see if it actually, you know, performs better with a shorter port. All right, just to kind of see exactly how long our port is. Oh, I was wrong. It's actually only six and a quarter inches long. This calls for four inch, so I've got to cut two inches off of it. So there's the current port in all of its glory. And that, uh, that hot glue mess that's not for me, that's from when they built the speaker. Pretty sad looking. You know what it is? It's actually two pieces of pipe glued together. Boy, they, uh, they spared no expense on this cabinet. Crazy. Well, anyway, I just need to cut two inches off of that, so I'm going to go ahead and mark it and cut two inches off of it. That'll get me in a ballpark. All right. Now we have a shorter port. But it's way, it's way, way crooked. But other than that, it's not bad. Four and a half. And four. <laughs> so it's just kind of in between the two. Well, I'm going to call it close enough for now.
So right now, that's that's just the woofer going. It's, the uh, crossovers bypassed, and the mid-range and the tweeter are disconnected. Almost four and a half, and almost four. Close enough. It's going to be tuned just a tick lower because it's got just a tiny, tiny bit longer port now. Don't think it's anything we'll hear though, or measure. Hey, they already sound better. What do you know? It's like magic. So I'm going to just do the left speaker, which I've got set up here. The microphone is on center, and it is exactly 12 inches away from that dust cap. First, we'll get our 
50 hertz tone. And we're going to do left front. All right, so there's our 50 hertz tone. 50 hertz, 50 dB. This is from the washing machine running. Now with any luck, we are tuned to 30, say 35 hertz. All right, we're shooting for 35 hertz. And this will be a base sweep. Left front only. Let's try the right speaker. similar. I think the biggest change we may see is in this area. So if we go to our screenshots, so this one should be the Dayton Classic. It's got this little trademark whoop, in here kind of dives down in this area and then this is the designer series it's got a much smoother slope it does make it to 35 if we're using this negative 60 as our reference line so you get a nice big bass boost all the way here to 80 hertz drop down between say 90 to 400 we drop down probably about 6 db and then back up again and this is a base sweep so it's going to fall off pretty sharply up in here so that's the dayton classic and that's the designer series dayton classic designer series Dayton Classic Designer Series. Not a whole lot of difference there. The Dayton Classic suffers from a little bit here in the, say, 40, oh, 40 to 60 hertz. Yeah. And the designer series not so much now where it doesn't seem to be a whole big difference and maybe a little bit more goes toward the Dayton classic here is from 80 Hertz to roughly not quite 200 let's see what this one looks like so from 80 Hertz to just about 200 so it's a little bit lower in SPL it's got this little suck out here but it seems to be maybe a little bit flatter but not a whole lot so not a huge difference in terms of the frequency response All right, let's go ahead with a full sweep. This will be on the Dayton Classic. All 
Right, so that's Dayton Classic. Dayton Designer Series. So those are so close. Definitely going to have to look at them kind of side by side. But uh, yeah, it's it's really close. I think that I'll have to compare it to the um, sweeps that we did yesterday. But I think that the shorter port did help it some. So that's pretty interesting. So tuning calculators based on this, I'm thinking that they work as long as you pick one that's pretty accurate. Yeah, not bad. So that's a wrap for this video and I hope you enjoyed it. What did we learn today? I think that if you're using a good port calculator and you have all the specs for your speakers, I think that that could be a huge benefit as far as smoothing out a response curve, getting the bass more where it's more or less best potential is, to put it in any kind of term. Um, this port length is based on a Q of 0.7, which is for the like optimal flat response, I believe. Um, this speaker here, this woofer here, is still, you know, in too small of a cabinet. But you can tell that it's behaving pretty respectably, despite being in too small of a cabinet. So is it worth the difference in price between the designer series and the classic? Hmm, I don't know. It's going to take some listening to figure out. I know when I'm sitting back there listening to it, I can definitely hear this one more often than this one. And I think that it's got a little bit higher sound pressure level as far as overall frequency response or maybe where a lot of the instruments and vocals hit. Maybe that's why it sounds a little bit louder, I'm not sure. Maybe it's just operating better because it's in more of a properly sized cabinet. More questions than I have answers for. So uh, if you have comments, questions, Put them in down below. I try to look at them and answer them probably in a day or less. So uh, anyway, I really appreciate you watching. I appreciate the comments and I hope you have a great day.